Here's a video on how to service your vintage Simplicity Alice Chalmers or Montgomery Ward Garden Mark tractor. And this will apply to tractors dating from 1958 to 1970. Everything that I'm going to be touching on is pretty much the same. And I'll cover some other items. So sit down, grab a pop or a beer, going in for the long haul so i'm going to try to not miss a thing first things up oil change all right before changing your oil start your tractor up let it run for a good long while get that uh, get all the juices flowing inside and then you just simply remove the oil cap now again this is a 12 horse I do have the original 23D um, but this 12 horse runs so good that when I broke connecting rod in the original engine I threw this engine in just so I'd still have the tractor to use and uh, as a result <laughs> the 12 horse just stayed in there and the clutch cable is not attached uh, but as soon as you start this thing up it's take the choke off and you're off and running to the races so it's not a big deal and as that oil comes out I like to take one of my floor jacks and jack up the left side of the tractor I'm going to be referring to left and right side as you're sitting on the tractor so keep that in mind throughout this video so we're going to do that and we'll come back after we've got all the oil out lift up on the left side that allows you to get the majority of the oil out. I am often asked how much oil do these take? It doesn't matter how much oil they take as long as you've got it full. That's pretty much the answer. I've already poured one quart in all right one quart would equate to 946 milliliters. Now we're going to see how much of this next quart it takes to top it off <clears throat> and when I say top it off I mean to where if you put one more drop in it's going to overflow and come out that is a full crankcase for a cast iron Briggs anything lower you're not getting as much oil circulating and it's going to need change more often so Fill it up. You're not going to hurt anything. Fill it to the top. Fill it to the brim. I was recently given a, uh, recently had an email asking me what level is correct. Because if you look down in, okay, you've got a shoulder at the base of this tube. You have a shoulder. And then you have the height of the tube. Bring it all the way up to the top of the tube where the threads are. All the way to the top. That would be full. So now we're going to find out just how much more oil it's going to take to get it to that point. And if memory serves, it's like a quart and a half. So be what, 1200 and some milliliters? 1300 and some. Don't have my metric conversion table in my brain. Alright, now I'm going to check the bottle and see where I'm at as far as how much I've put in. Okay, I've put in, that, that was a good guess on my part. Put in exactly half a quart. So now we're at one and a half quarts and I bet I still can fit more in there you want to fit as much in as you can let's take a look 
Yeah, we still got plenty more room. You guys can see it's not all the way up to the top yet. So, quart and a half, yeah, that, that's enough oil to keep it at that level. That's enough oil. But for an engine that doesn't have an oil filter, more is better. And you can't overfill it to the point where you're going to hurt anything. Let's see how much more. I'm pouring oil. I know it's out of view. We're going to take a look. How much more did I put in there? I put another four ounces in there. So let's see where we're at now. Not quite to the top yet, so we're going to keep going. We get about another four ounces, then we'll stop and check again. It's like watching paint dry, isn't it? Uh, and also remember, use non-detergent oil. Boy, I'm just, I'm nailing it each time. There's another four ounces. Let me take a look. All right, it's coming up. I don't know that I can fit another four ounces in, but we're gonna attempt it. And another four ounces will take me to all but four ounces of being two quarts. And as I'm pouring, I'm watching. I'm not putting the funnel in all the way into the hole so that it can have a, a air gap. And I'm also looking to make sure that it's not um, overflowing on me as I'm pouring it. Let's see where we're at now. Okay, we are now at the bottom of the threads. So there's your answer. How much do these cast irons take? Well, I fit all but four ounces of two quarts in the crankcase. That's what the engine on a, with the tractor itself on a level plane um yeah just fill it to the brim and with non-detergent any engine that does not have an oil filter you run non-detergent if it has an oil filter you can run a multi-weight that has detergent I've, i know i sound like a broken record to a lot of you guys but to those of you who are relatively new to the channel non-detergent oil is the standard for non-oil filter engines just think of it that way no oil filter no detergent and detergent is a misnomer. It's not an actual cleaning agent. It's not a detergent. What it does is it holds the contaminants in suspension instead of allowing the contaminants to drop to the bottom of the oil pan so that they will travel through an oil filter. If you run detergent oil in your engine, you are sending all the contaminants throughout your engine instead of them settling out of harm's way at the bottom of the oil pan. That's for you new guys, all the new guys. All right, let's get on to the next step. Okay, next up we're gonna do some oiling and greasing. And the points that we're gonna oil and grease are any moving parts. That's pretty self-explanatory. Any moving parts. Uh, and that's just to keep uh, oil barrier. Oh, I got here. <laughs> okay. Um, it's just to keep an oil barrier keep it from being dry metal on dry metal. So first off, you see, I've got it jacked up in the air. Where's the first obvious place you can see that might need some oil? Right here on this pivot, all right? Then underneath the tractor, also on the axle, there's a wishbone, there's a point underneath, and I'll grab my lift, I will lift the tractor up and show you that when we get to it. But first, you want to put oil, let me get that little piece of, and all I've got in here is just straight 30 weight piece of a windshield washer hose and then a little uh, air fill adapter that I'm using as a kind of a pinpoint because there's a bunch of different areas. It, it makes it a lot easier to be able to swing around and get to where you need to go. So pump up some oil and I'll pump it up right here behind the axle right over top of that bolt until I get some oil dripping out. 
there got a couple drops coming out there and it doesn't hurt when you do it give things a move around all right and we also want to oil on the face a little bit of oil right there let it run around and again do that when you do that you're creating an oil barrier and you're keeping everything happy and don't worry about over oiling you're not going to hurt a thing if you're one of those that's anal retentive and wants to have everything spick and span clean um, I still recommend get that oil on there and let the oil stay because it will create a barrier it'll get dusty and that dust will create a protective crust against moisture against all kinds of things all right next up we've got our steering rod that goes left to right that ties the two wheels together give you some oil there okay and you can see it's nice and oily now I'm constantly oiling these a little bit of oil all the way around the top and a little bit of oil up underneath where everything meets and then move it around make sure you spread that oil out spread it out spread it out next up we have got a grease zerk right here for the front spindle this particular tractor has poor man's power steering on it you won't believe how easily this thing turns it's like it has been honestly is like it has power steering um, I've got videos on uh, doing the poor man's power steering and uh, if I remember I'll post links down in the description now as far as the wheels go if you're doing a full-on service you want to pop your hubcap off pop your grease cap off take your lock collar off and pack your bearings it's just like automotive bearings your tapered needle bearings okay now we've got our grease fitting right here I use red and tacky marine and I use that because I don't know when I'm going to be out in the uh, elements okay and what that did was right down here it pushed grease out and it's already full so it pushed out the old grease it's got all the dirt and dust and all that stuff on it and put new grease there all right and again move it around and we can also see on top here we pushed just a little bit of grease out the top as well the reason that I like to do this with it jacked up is so that this thrust washer on the top here is kind of blocking the passage and making sure that you're greasing top to bottom and especially at the bottom because that's where all of the weight is when the tractor is in use is right there at the bottom it's especially important on tractors with front mounted implements okay so we've got those two taken care of I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side take care of that side then we'll lift this thing up in the air and I'll show you the other point that you want to be sure to make sure that you get some grease on hang on all right on the left side of the mower as you're sitting on it left side of the garden tractor you've got some lube points your drag link has a ball and socket on the front and a ball and socket on the back if you're not going to remove it and pack it with grease which you can do then just get some oil in it and you can do that simply enough and that's where this comes in handy because you can point it upwards to shoot oil in there and then this one will gravity feed right down into the ball There you go. All right. Then you have your rock shaft. That's your rock shaft right here. Your rock shaft also is a metal on metal fit. So give it a good squirt. A good squirt on the outside will work just fine for those of you who still have your side covers on and you can't get to the uh, inside. Don't worry about it. A nice good squirt there. And then if you've got your strong, if you have your strong arm work that strong arm back and forth back and forth back and forth lubricate any and all pivot points 
any and all. Got a hydro left. Well, I don't want that little sucker to dry out right there. And I don't want this to dry out. Just tiniest little bit of oil. You don't need much at all. And then up here, anywhere that either pivots and right here, typically you've got enough seepage of oil uh, coming from that, I think it's a pintle, uh, that you don't have to worry about it too much. I will show it to you though. Let me get a flashlight. There's a couple of lengths of chain if you have a hydro lift. If you don't have a hydro lift, this is a moot point. What you would do in that case would be to come out and lubricate all of your pivot points here on your strong arm lift, okay? Now you would oil down in there, you would oil here, oil on the inside, and I usually smear a little bit of grease along the shift quadrant there as well, all right? So that covers those of you with strong arm lift handles. But now let me show you the chain link down there. You can see it move. See it moving? That usually is going to have a little bit of oil coming from your hydro to keep that lubricated. That shaft comes over and that's the end of the shaft right there. Okay? So you've got that taken care of. Now what have you got? Well, you just keep on working back. Left, right, left, right. Over here we have our mid PTO. The mid PTO has a number of lubricating points on it as well. Your shift quadrant, it'll still have this pivot point. This is just a hydro lift plate that takes the place of the uh, shift quadrant for strong arm. A little bit of oil on both sides and then work it. Work it to spread that oil out. Same thing right here. A little bit of oil on the outside, a little bit of oil on the inside. Just, just a drop or two, that's all it takes, okay? The spring, the spring compresses and releases, so give the spring just a little bit of oil so that when it is riding on that rod, you have a film of oil that is protecting that rod. I've seen these rods worn almost completely through. You have a number of pivot points here as well on your mid PTO. Okay, you have a pivot point here, you have a pivot point here. You can go ahead and put a little bit of, these are sealed bearings, but it doesn't hurt to put just a drop or two of oil on the inside and outside here. Down here on the main pulley, the main pulley has needle bearings in it and there is a grease zerk right here. A couple pumps of grease, okay? And then like I say, any, anything that moves, any part that moves, you can see that it's pivoting here, it's pivoting here. Oil it. This piece right here also pivots, the whole thing. So you have the, the shaft that's had the, that has that in place, you want to also oil in there, okay? So now I'm just going to go through real quick on everything else that you want to be sure that you oil up. Pivot points. I, I know I keep saying it. Any and all pivot points. Any and all. This is your brake clutch lever. Oil it. Don't oil your brake band, but oil your brake band actuator. Oil that pivot point. Oil here. Right here. Up underneath to about well it's actually right about where my fingers at is a little metal sleeve that the shift rod slides in it's a guide take that little piece of rubber hose on your oil oiler you can see how there's a bunch of dirty stuff on here that's because I've oiled it okay make sure you oil that you should already have some gear oil coming out at the top here. There are no seals up here, so a tiny little bit of gear oil comes up and that helps self-lubricate that. You can see it's kind of got a shine on it, all right? 
But again, any and all pivot points. You've got this short little rod right down here. Can you see that? That short little rod. Pivot point, pivot point. Then you've got pivot points, pivot points. Anywhere there is a pivot point. I know I've said that about 5,000 times. Oil, okay? Or grease, if there's a grease zerk. Now we're going to get on to another section. Hang on. Now we'll come around to the back. We have a lot of pivot points here. Pivot point, pivot point, pivot point. Hinges for the seat, for raising and lowering the seat. A little drop of oil. A little drop of oil will go a long way. A lot of pivot points over here on this side as well. You have the idler pulley pivot. All of the rods that go from left to right, they need to be oiled just where they meet the metal. Wherever something meets the metal, that's where you want to oil it. Here's the opposite side of the mid PTO that gets oil. And then straight down, right there, is a grease zerk. That grease zerk feeds grease into the differential. You want to put about five pumps of grease with each service. Not that big a deal. Let me come up here to the dash. The dash, yes, the dash. Well, those are pivot points. You want to keep those cables nice and lubricated. A little bit of lubrication. A little bit of oil. Keep those moving nice and smooth. All right. Let me come back up to the rock shaft. If you want to be sure that you've got everything lubricated on the rock shaft, pull one side cover off and then below into the bowels of the tractor is your rock shaft pivot points. Okay. Right here is my cylinder. That's my cylinder. And this is my lift rod. Oil it. A couple drops of oil. And then right behind that, see that steering knuckle moving? You need oil there as well. A little dabble do you. Now we're going to lift this thing up in the air. And, oh, I did forget one thing. Let me get back over here to this side before we're done. Your clutch and brake pedal. A little drop of oil down here. And then you can I'll get the camera in a spot where you can see. You can get in there and get to the end of that where the bushing is. Or not the bushing, but just where the rod comes through and give that a little shot of oil too. Everything gets oil. If you have a right hand lift, just, just like doing the left hand lift, oil it, oil it, oil it. Now we're going to pick it up in the air and show you. There's a couple more things we've got to do underneath the tractor. All right, we are under. You see the 60 hertz light flickering over here. Um, on your steering gears, on the older ones, there is one grease or two grease fittings because it's a two-piece gear system. All right, let me just turn the wheel. Oh, wrong way. Turn the wheel. And it makes that one a little bit more visible right there okay a couple pumps of grease in that one and then here's your other one right here a couple pumps of grease you can see the grease on it sorry don't get too close you see the grease on there so you want to make sure that you take care of those too and then i was talking about the axle and the spots on the axle uh, on the wishbone that you need to make sure that you grease and that spot is right there. You can see where that the axle wishbone goes right in up there. Right there, right there, right there. Grease that and grease it well, okay? Um, loose front ends nine times out of ten are attributed to this never getting any attention so that is an important spot to make sure that you take care of so i'm going to go ahead and lube these points while i'm well i've got this up on the lift and then we will here wait a minute you guys can see you see the grease zerk 
a little better on the trying to hold the light and the camera at the same time see the grease circ there on the mid PTO and then your pivot points and now we're going to move to the back of the tractor I already mentioned the grease zerk on the differential now we have to look at fluid levels both the transmission transaxle fluid levels and the bevel gearbox fluid levels so hang on okay now we're talking gear oil two components of these tractors have gear oil the bevel gearbox being one and it doesn't hurt when you are servicing to check your lash on your bevel gearbox this is the tightest bevel gearbox it is just the best of the best right here so all is well with the world but you'll notice right behind it is a little 45 degree street valve with a cap on it that's where you check and fill with gear oil also right here should be a little red cap that is a vent cap do not fill it there to fill this bevel gearbox full or you're going to be sending oil out of every orifice this thing has all right you fill it up until the oil comes up that street valve or that street fitting all right that's gear oil number one gear oil number two you have two access points you have one right here and you have another one down low if you need to add oil you'll take this out only so that it will breathe a little better as you're adding oil on the lower section you do not add oil from the top you can add oil from the top but if you do so right here on the right side of the tractor get some light on that right there there's another plug you take that plug out and you can fill from that plug right there until oil comes out here then you're full if you want to drain and change the oil you have another drain plug all the way down at the bottom that's for draining and flushing the oil now what do I suggest as far as gear oil goes I absolutely suggest either 75W90 or 80W90 full synthetic why you will not believe the change in your shifting and ease of shifting in and out of gears it just really 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 wakes up the transmission and bevel gearbox and makes them run so much nicer uh, the only downside of it is you're going to get a little bit more weeping coming out of the back here okay just bear that in mind um, and since we've gotten to the end of the tractor we have gotten to the end of servicing a 1958 to 1970 if you so desire you can also add just a little skosh of oil right here that is a rubber bushing with a brass oil light or bronze oil light uh, bushing pressed into it right here so a little bit of lift it up a little bit put a little bit of oil down in there but you can see there's very little movement in the steering while you're going through and doing all of your servicing there's I know I just already said that we're done but we're not sorry because uh, I just remembered good thing I did so I'll help you guys out if you're steering if your steering wheel is not centered that's just a matter of lengthening or shortening your drag length that's all it is lengthen it or shorten it until your steering wheel straight and your wheels are driving straight easy peasy on that note now there are two 530 seconds set screws I've talked about set screws before your set screws must have a sharp edge in order for them to do their jobs properly okay but I've made this is actually for this particular job um, ugly Alice's the steering gear coming down is a little bit chewed up so every time I do a service on ugly Alice I actually swap out those um, set screws with new ones 
so that they'll bite in and they'll chew and they'll grab a hold of that shaft a lot a lot tighter uh, but you have two five thirty seconds set screws tighten them down you can see I put an extended handle on it that's so I can really tighten them down and that's what you want to make sure that you do um, otherwise you're gonna have way sloppy steering okay also the clearances here are easy enough if it's if they're real sloppy on there you can take the small cotter pin out and I can show you better on the front See right here there's a X on there just take a screwdriver put it in there and tighten it down and you're golden and good to go you've also got two set screws here and here do the same thing wrench on them get them tightened down make sure that your set screws are good and sharp I'll show you what good sharp new set screws look like here okay this is my collection of set screws as well as my collection of differential nylons um, but let me find a nice big one so that it's easier to see now nope, that one's flat I don't even know why that's in there if it's that flat that one's flat also hang on I'll find one here we go all right here's just a standard square head which is what most of yours are going to have uh, and then you'll just use the appropriate wrench to tighten them down but you see how it's got a divot in there that divot is what bites into the metal that angle you want it to bite into the metal if you don't bite into the metal you're going to end up looking like this see how that's all shiny and screwed up you might ask why do i keep these you can actually sharpen them yourself you can set these up in a drill press and drill them down a little bit and then come over to a grinding wheel and reface them with a 45 degree angle on the outside and get yourself essentially a new set screw out of an old used wore out clapped out set screw so there you go now we have reached the end of course check your air pressure and your tires do all that kind of fun happy stuff got a few more things i'm going to do on this uh, i'm not going to clean it up or give it a bath i'll leave that up to uh future uh future goings on um but there you have it i'm gonna wire this light back up back here um there you have it that's how you service and lube your 1958 to 1970 simplicities alice chalmers and montgomery ward garden marks uh, you can also if you want go through and lubricate your cables uh, I do suggest doing that to keep them from stiffening up uh, Sometimes that requires a, a little bit of finagling Just to be able to get to them, but the thing that I recommend using is uh, LMT which is lawnmower tune-up in a can, okay? It's right there small engine tune-up. It's essentially trans uh, uh, watered down or acetoned down uh, transmission fluid so it will creep into the outer sheath of your cables and allow your cables to work like butter just like just like mine do so if you want to service what's underneath the hood we'll cover that on another video so friendly neighborhood zippo hope you guys enjoyed my battery's dying I'll catch you all on the next one later I'm out of here.